mic. Is that okay? You can do whatever you want. Okay. I mean, but we'll see because I have a cold. I do have a frog in my throat, so uh, we'll see how long that this little, this little guy lasts. Hi. Look at you, little camera. Um, I actually was under the impression that this was going to be uh, queer teens. I'm not making any suggestions about AIDS because I do not be able to check IDs on the way in here. But <laughs> when I walked in, I was like, man, there are many teenagers here. <laughs> Your team? Really? <laughs> 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 Matt, you need to leave. Okay. Right now. Hey. Hey. Um, I remember the first time I realized I was writing humor is when I wrote the most bro brutal poem about my interactions with my mother, which was very brutal. And then, um, and everybody was just laughing their ass off in the audience. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> and you're amazing. You made everybody cry back then. Uh, sorry. No. That's why I did trees after. Uh, uh, Cheer you up. Yeah. I did, um, okay. I'm going to do a poem about, uh, that I wrote when somebody asked me a question that said, uh, when was the first time you realized that being Jewish wasn't the only option? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Jewish child visits her freshly even jello sized aunt. <laughs> Even just <laughs> yeah, it takes a moment. I, I let this give a second. <laughs> I was introduced to the crucifix by Harold, my aunt's new Christian husband. It hung on the wall across from my bed. It was the only thing decorating the room, save for a cat mobile, <laughs> strung from the window. The man on the cross. He wore a miniskirt. <laughs> oh, that's so true. <laughs> and was bleeding profusely. <laughs> this man loves you even more than your own mother. Harold said. Well, I wanted to explain that most people did. <laughs> he took the covers tight around my throat, he sat on the end of the bed and began to tell me about the story of the man on the cross. Now, Harold the dog was Bugsy with a beagle whose ears were freakishly long. And he was a horny creature. <laughs> Often rubbing his underbelly against any table, foot, or face, sturdy enough to invite that wet red lipstick-shaped stick to emerge from the brain. <laughs> Interracial marriage acceptor, boy, this is just biology here. Um, no one seemed to notice when the dog began fornicating, and if they did, he would be escorted out to the yard. Now, I felt embarrassed for him and started to dread his appearance. So, when Bugsy entered the room, just as Harold was describing the purge of birth, I closed my eyes in this painful anticipation. But the dog, he began to moan, his body now latched to the boot of my uncle. This was too much to bear. <laughs> I began to stare at the crucifix, <laughs> pointedly, imagining what he, this Jesus might look like in my doll's clothing. I don't think Harold meant for the kid to send the dog fly. But as Bugsy yelped, the maroon blur of his penis toppling back, as his spine smacked against the wall, its impact echoing as if it come from above us, you know, or beneath us, we all jumped, even the bed, the animal, and now a quiet sack, he did not move. The crucifix had fallen. One arm touched the outstretched flap of Bugsy's endless ear, the cat mobile spun in panic circles. Harold, that, Harold reached down and lifted the cross tenderly to be sure, you know, nothing had been broken. Wow. Wow.